The countryside of Brandenburg is distinguished by its pine woods, lakes, small hills and picturesque avenues, popular destinations for excursions. In order that future generations may also experience and enjoy this beauty, we must protect our environment. An important contribution is how to deal with waste. Since the middle of 2005, municipal waste is no longer allowed to be stored on sites unprocessed. It must be processed according to the Ordinance on Environmentally Compatible Storage of Waste so that the environment won't be damaged. In order to comply with this important task, the Southern Brandenburg Waste Treatment Association and the administrative district Oder Spray founded the Waste Treatment Association Nuta Spray, in short ZAB, in 2002. From 2004 to 2006, it invested in the future by building one of the most progressive residual waste treatment plants in Europe, and thus created new qualified jobs in the region. The Mechanical Biological Stabilization Plant is located in Niederlehme, approximately 40 kilometers from Berlin city center. In this plant, municipal waste is processed in a mechanical biological treatment, 135,000 tons per year from over 200,000 households. With the dry stabilet method, municipal waste is separated after chopping and drying and then recycled into individual material categories. More than 50% of the daily municipal waste can be converted into a high-class substitute fuel. The so-called dry stabilet is used for power generation in industrial plants and power plants, resource-saving and environmentally sound. Trucks transport the municipal waste directly to the plant. Airlocks at the gates prevent offensive smells from escaping from the stock. The waste is dumped into a deep silo. Its capacity of approximately 7,000 cubic meters is equivalent to about 300 truckloads. That is as much as the average waste of 100,000 households per month in the region of the association. Moist municipal waste is first collected in the deep silo. A second area, the flat silo, serves mainly for the delivery of dry industrial and bulky waste. The amount of industrial and bulky waste is approximately 20%. After a rough separation, this waste is processed individually. In the next step, any waste from the deep silo is pre-chopped in order to be easily separated afterwards. The pre-chopping machine is filled by a computer-controlled crane. After chopping, the waste is delivered to the intermediate silo. A second crane then fills each of the nine rotting boxes. Computer programs control the accurate and correct filling. In the rotting boxes, the first important step for further processing of the water is made. In order to separate and sort the waste, it first has to be dried. In a controlled process, the microorganisms in the waste produce heat, which leads to the evaporation of moisture. The waste is stabilized biologically for seven days under lock and key. Computer-controlled air supply and collection by ventilators control the temperature and carry off moisture and exhaust gases from the boxes. The loss of moisture leads to a loss of about 30% of the waste's mass. The exhaust air evolving in the drying process may not be drawn off to the outside. 
With a temperature of 50 degrees centigrade, it contains organic compounds, such as alcohols, aldehydes, and aromatic hydrocarbons, which form odorous substances. By condensing the exhaust air in a heat exchanger, the moisture is eliminated. The evolving condensate is processed separately. By chemical and biological methods, the concentrations of ammonium, COD and BOD5 are reduced, and the water is then filtered. The cleaned waste water partly evaporates in the cooling cycle. The remaining part is collected in a separate tank and serves as water for firefighting in case of emergency. The exhaust air contains organic and partly toxic components. In three combustors of the air treatment plant for short lara through which the air flows, the thermic destruction is made at a temperature of 850 degrees centigrade. After a following waste heat utilization, the exhaust air may now be harmlessly carried off into the environment. After seven days, the drying process is complete and the rotting box may be opened. The dry condition of the waste facilitates efficient processing and accurate separation of the materials. The waste is much fluffier now and has already 50% more heating value than unprocessed municipal waste. But direct burning would cause an excessively high contamination with the amount of heavy metals. The flammable materials must be separated from the remaining materials. The second core area of the dry stabilet method takes effect, the mechanical separation. Via conveyor, the dry waste is transported to the separating aggregates. In the disk screen, the first rough separation via fractioning by size is carried out. The individual material streams are then separated by their density into heavy and light fractions. The components of the incombustible heavy fractions with a density of more than 2 grams per cubic centimetre clearly stand out against the components of the inflammable light fraction with a density of about 1 gram per cubic centimetre. Via density separation, the mixed stabilet may be freed from nearly any incombustible components, inert materials and metals. This material separation is carried out for various sizes in pneumatic ore processing tables and air separators. Light materials such as paper, wood, plastics and textiles are separated via air streams from heavy inert materials such as glass, ceramics, stones and metals. Some material streams are separated into even smaller sizes in order to obtain a more effective density separation. This happens via shaking screens. Light and heavy fractions that are bigger than 35 millimeters are post-chopped in addition.
From the light and heavy fractions, metals are sorted out by two methods. Peripherous metals, such as steel and cast iron, of the individual material streams are separated into an additional material stream via magnetic metal separation. In eddy current separators, anti-magnetic but electrically conducting metals such as aluminium and copper are separated via fast rotating magnets and may thus be carried back to industrial use. In the complex combination of different materials, there are always composite materials that may not be separated by this method. This group of materials contains, first of all, batteries and chlorous plastics. As they would damage the environment by being burnt or being deposited unprocessed, they have to be sorted out by hand and disposed of in a special way. Dry waste, mechanical shaking and conveyor movements produce a high amount of dust in the plant's closed aggregates. In the residual waste treatment plant Niederlehmer, this dust is sucked off, filtered and mixed with the dry stabilite. At the end of this biological and mechanical process, the usable materials, such as plastics, paper and wood, may be converted to a high quality fuel, the dry stabilite. In pellet presses, it is slightly pelletized or processed into pellets. Trucks transport it for energetic utilization to industrial power plants. Right from the beginning, ZAB has supplied brown coal power plants. The secondary fuel may also be used in the cement industry. Secondary fuels produced by ZAB in the Niederlehme plant have an outstanding energetic and environmental balance. The pellets produced in Niederlehme have the same fuel features as brown coal. High heating value, low heavy metal contamination, high storage stability and a uniform structure. It is thus possible to integrate secondary fuel into a flexible energy supply. The door for a compelling connection between waste management and power industry has been pushed wide open, and the Waste Treatment Association Neuter Spray keeps this door wide open. The residual waste treatment plant of ZAB in Niederlehme is an example for how waste management and power generation may be designed in an environmentally friendly way. Looking forward, ZAB has invested in the future of the environment and the region by building this plant, so that pine woods, lakes, small hills and picturesque avenues will remain a special feature of the Brandenburg countryside.